Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather in this Eucharistic celebration, we recognize and acknowledge God's presence in us and God's power working in our lives. We also offer in this Mass our special intention for our brothers and sisters in Haiti and Afghanistan. We pray that God would continue to bless them with solidarity and peace with one another. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, You came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, 
fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth in Ophrah that belonged to Joash, the Abiezerite. While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to save it from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O champion. Gideon said to him, My Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For now the Lord has abandoned us and has delivered us into the power of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and save Israel from the power of Midian. It is I who send you. But Gideon answered him, Please, my Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the lowliest in Manasseh, and I am the most insignificant in my father's house. I shall be with you, the Lord said to him, and you will cut down Midian to the last man. Gideon answered him, If I find favor with you, give me a sign that you are speaking with me. Do not depart from here, I pray you, until I come back to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. He answered, I will await your return. So Gideon went off and prepared a kid and a measure of flour in the form of unleavened cakes. Putting the meat in a basket and a broth in a pot, he brought them out to him under the terebinth and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened cakes and lay them on this rock, then pour out the broth. When he had done so, the angel of the Lord stretched out the tip of the staff he held and touched the meat and unleavened cakes. Thereupon, a fire came up from the rock and consumed the meat and unleavened cakes, and the angel of the Lord disappeared from sight. Gideon, now aware that it has been the angel of the Lord, said, Alas, Lord God, that I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord answered him, Be calm. Do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built there an altar to the Lord and called it Yahweh Shalom. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people and to his faithful ones and to those who put in him their hope. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. 
Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men, this is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers or sisters, or father or mother, or children or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The people of Israel has this very interesting practice of naming places after their experience or encounter with God. Ang mga taga-Israel ay mayroon po silang gawain na kung saan ang isang lugar ay ipinapangalan nila sa Diyos ang isang lugar ay binibigyan ng nila ng pangalan ayon sa kanilang karanasan sa Diyos. And this, we can see in our first reading, a beautiful example of this practice can be seen in the story of Gideon from the book of Judges in the Old Testament that we heard in our first reading we will see that Gideon encountered God through a messenger. The angel appeared to Gideon. And the angel, the messenger of God, told him that God is sending him to fight the Midianites, the enemies of the people of Israel. But Gideon doubted. He said, how can I win against the Midianites? They are powerful. We Israelites are but a small people. And he said, 
I am a poor man. I am a small man in the community. I am nothing in the community. How can you say that I will win against the Midianites who are powerful? But God assured him of his victory. God assured him that it will not only be him who will fight, but God will fight for him against the enemy. And so, in that place where Gideon talked with God, offered something for God, he gave it a name. The name of that place is Yahweh Shalom, meaning God is my peace. A place where he doubted, a place where he was afraid, a place where he did not believe in himself, a place where he doubted God. God gave him there assurance and faith. That is why the place of fear, the place of doubt, he named Yahweh Shalom. God is my peace. Because in that place of fear, he recognized that God will be his peace. Ang lugar kung saan nagduda si Gideon, ang lugar kung saan natakot siya, ay binigyan niya ng pangalan ng Diyos. Ang Diyos ang aking magiging kapayapaan at kapanatagan sa gitna ng takot at pangamba. This is also what we see in our gospel passage today. When the disciples were afraid, they also doubted salvation for them. Because Jesus said, it will be difficult for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus assured them, for men, it will be impossible. But for God, all things are possible. In that place where the disciples questioned Jesus, in that place where the disciples doubted, that they will be allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus assured them that in that place of doubt, Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. Yung lugar kung saan nagdalawang isip ang mga alagad, parang binigyan ni Jesus ng pangalan, sa Diyos, lahat ay posible makapangyayari lahat sa Diyos my dear brothers and sisters i think this is a good practice for us to claim a place and a space for god give a place a name after god this is a way for us to recognize and acknowledge the presence of God and that even in the midst of disappointments and fear in that place, we acknowledge that the power of God will reign. Parang maganda po na gawin natin ito na ang mga lugar ay bigyan natin ng pangalang ayon sa Diyos upang kilalani natin ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa mga lugar na ito. This is a way for us to claim our spaces for God by naming them after God. So imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, if you have a place where you feel afraid, instead of saying, ah, I am afraid of this place. I do not want to go into this place. Instead of saying that, name that place of fear, God is my strength. The places of sickness, 
I know we are used to hearing words like hospitals, intensive care units, hospital beds. Instead of repeating those names that will make us really afraid, call these places, God is my healer. Your places of work, instead of just calling them offices, my place of work, a place where I feel tired, name these places, God is my provider. God will provide. So that in these places, we do not just recognize that these places are places of tiredness, of sickness, of fear, of trembling and disappointments. In every place, we recognize that God is there, that His power is at work in that place. And even in places of death, I know we are very used to calling them morgues, funeral homes. Instead of using those names, why don't we call them and give them a name after God? God is my home. God is my rest. God is my consolation. I think when we claim a space for God and name them after God, then we are able to recognize that even in these spaces of fear, of sickness, of problems, we recognize that God is working in those places, that God is more powerful in those spaces. My dear brothers and sisters, claim your space for God. Name them after God. And God will work His power in these places. Amen. We now pray to God our Father for the strength to overcome the lure of material wealth and security. For every petition, let us say, Set our hearts for your kingdom, O Lord. Set our hearts for your kingdom, O Lord. That the Church may bear witness to the values of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Set our, our hearts, hearts for your, your kingdom, kingdom, O Lord. That wealthy nations may share the resources with the poor nations and not exploit them. Let us pray to the Lord. Set, Set our, our hearts, hearts for, for your, your kingdom, kingdom, O Lord. That Christians who are living in abundance may learn the wisdom of using their wealth with generous charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Set our hearts for your kingdom, O Lord. That we may show compassion and care to the elderly, the poor, and the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Set our hearts for your kingdom, O Lord. That the dead may share in the riches of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Set our hearts for your kingdom, O Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the petitions of your people. May we be nourished by the wisdom of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen act of spiritual communion my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.